We're in the river today, obviously. And if you're ever here in the south during the summertime, this is where you want to be. Otherwise, out there on land, you're going to be frying and dying in this heat and humidity. But we like to stay in the rivers. We like to stay in the water. Lots of fishing, lots of life all around these waterways. But one of the biggest life forms and sources of meat that many people overlook here in Texas are the clams. And we're talking about freshwater mussels, clams, not the little bitty guys, but very large, uh, very edible, easy, easy meat. And up and down these banks, these mud and sand banks, you're going to find all different kinds. And we're talking about dozens and dozens of different species of clam we have all across Texas. Uh, and they come in all shapes, sizes, and flavors. So, uh, here in our waterways, you can see a little bit of color to the water, lots of nutrients, and that allows our clam species to uh, survive and thrive for the most part. So, what I'm going to show you right now is how we go about collecting those. And you don't need any real tools. What I have over my uh, side or my shoulder right now is a mesh bag. I use those to put the clams in. You can use a basket, you can use a backpack. Sometimes we just kind of fill our pockets full of clams. Uh, you do want to make sure that you know what kind of clams you have in your area. And if you grab something you're not sure of, definitely look it up because Texas does have a lot of threatened and endangered clam species and you want to make sure that you're not collecting those. So first things first, you have your bag, you have your hands, that's all you're going to need. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is at different levels, all the way up to the bank, down to uh, right where my jawline hits and I'll be stretching all the way down. That's where I'm going to find these clams. And different species like different levels in the water table. And there's different sands and silts and clays in different layers also. And you're going to find different kinds of clams there. So you just kind of have to play around with it. Sometimes you have to travel quite a ways. We're talking about 100 yards before you really hit a bank that has them. Now this sloping bank right here comes down. I'm on my knees right here. If I go out another 10 foot, I'm, well, underwater. So you have a limited range that you're going to find these guys in, track back and forth. And what I'm going to do is take my hands down in the mud and I'm just going to kind of feel. And what's going to happen is the clams are going to be shoved in the mud, blade up, and your fingers are going to touch over them. And once you touch them, you can go ahead and pull them out. All different sizes, uh, pretty, pretty nice. Here in my area, and then we're below San Antonio, uh, about 70 miles at least, uh, we have about four different clam species in this river that I've come across thus far, uh, two of which are actually protected by Texas. So coming across them is not a bad thing. Uh, pull them up, look at them. They're pretty awesome. But uh, you are not allowed to keep them and for gosh sakes, don't go and cook them. All right, so I'm going back and forth. Sometimes I'm raking just straight back towards my body. Sometimes I'm going side to side. And I got the first one. Cool, cool. And that's, that's actually a small clam right there. This is what we call a washboard. So, pretty good looking guy. Pretty dark. Has some uh, waves on that shell. Now, I'm telling you that this is small. The largest one I've ever found in this river happened about three years ago, and it was about this big. So we're talking a lot of meat. But inside this, a couple ounces, pretty good stuff. You can eat them raw, but uh, if you have any questions about the river and the water and any of the parasites, I would suggest that you uh, either steam or bake or boil or cook in some way to make sure that uh, any of the water inside this clam gets to go away. Uh, any of the water gets purified. You don't want to have anything or ingest anything that's going to make you sick. So if it was me, bake them. And uh, we got a video on that too. Real easy, real simple. Bag this guy and keep on going. Now, depending on the year, depending on your area, it might take you a little bit of time to find these you might be able to do it quite quickly. All right, I got some more. Okay, and this one right here, it's a bit of a dark one, but that is a protected species here in Texas. 
Uh, and this happened about three or four years ago that they actually uh, got listed. So I have eaten this type. It's got a lot more meat than the uh, than the washboard, but the flavor's a lot stronger. Pound for pound, a lot of meat. We're not going to keep that. So go ahead and throw them back here. And another washboard. So I pulled two up with that pull. For the most part, I like having a backpack, and in that way I'm able to use both hands. You can get, get through with a lot more very quickly with both hands. All right. uh, another washboard clam, real small guy, and this thing. This is a golden orb. This is another protected species of freshwater clam here in Texas. So enjoy them, take a look at them, take pictures, and when you're done, they need to go back where you found them. All right. Make sure that we put all of our clams back that we don't want to eat or that are uh, illegal to possess. All right. Got some more. So, real fast, let me show you. Your clams are going to be in the dirt. They can move. And uh, they're not going to move in the cartoon fashion where they open up and swim. They have kind of a fake foot. And so what you're going to do is that under the water, what I'm feeling is the clam's going to be burrowed in, blade just like that. And as I pull through, I'm going to touch the blade. So he's down there in the mud, and he's pushing straight up just like that. I'll go ahead and pull up. I wonder what that is over there. Yeah, right here in the middle of nowhere, some kind of creature's moving around. Uh, we've got about a six foot long gar over here uh, making waves as well. So, welcome to the wild. Uh, that's what you're going to feel. Each one of these clams is going to be pushed in the soil just like that. And uh, they'll burrow themselves and move around from, from place to place. So. You want to try not to gather clams too often in the same areas. You want to uh, switch it up a little bit. You don't want to take down the population. So, As far as how fast I can collect these things, you can get a lot of meat really quick. Three more of the washboards. And here is your mini clam. Little bitty guy, but meat is meat. So, survival food, a definite. You can actually use the clamshells and you can use them as blades and you can skin with them as well. They're incredibly sharp and you want to make sure that you don't cut yourself when you're opening up the clams. If you are fishing, you can also open these guys up and shuck them and you can use the meat and muscle inside as bait. So lots of different things you can do with this stuff. It's always here, no matter what time of year, even if it's cold, you can jump in, you can gather up a ton of meat in a very short amount of time without any tools. So there's your freshwater clams, guys. We'll show you a couple ways of uh, cooking them here and there, and hopefully those video links will be posted. As always, like and subscribe. We'll catch you later. Ah, more clams.